Good evening, everyone. I have encouraging words for you. This is not our home. In our daily walk, we go through various hardships and trials. With drug abuse on the rise, we see how many of those that we know have died because of overdose and suicide. Life here is now is full of evil and distress. We long for something new. Our hope is for the promised land. But we are not to live out this life just dragging our feet. God gave us all a purpose. I've been reading Revelation. And especially this month, I've been reading the last few chapters. And every time I would listen to it or read it, I would get encouraged of what is to come. And not only that, it helped me live in the present day because it would give me an opportunity to look at every situation through the light of eternity. And I'd like to share some of those verses from Revelation. So we see in verse 18, I mean chapter 18, we see that the fall of Babylon. Some people believe Babylon is New York City. Some believe Babylon is the, the, the New World Order. And others believe that it's actually the old Babylon that is going to be restored. But then in Revelation 19, we see in verse 1, After these things I heard a loud voice of great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to our Lord, our God. And in verses 11 and 12, Now I saw the heaven open up, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on, it, on, him, he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and his head were of many crowns. He had a name written on it that no one knew except himself. And then verse 16. And he has an, his robe, and on his, on his robe and on his thigh a name written, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He's not coming back as a lamb for the slaughter. He's coming back as the King of kings, victorious. And then we see in chapter 20, the thousand-year reign. And what a wonderful verse Revelation 20, 2 to 3, and he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and he bound him for a thousand years, and he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Then we see the thousand-year reign. He comes back out again. He deceives the nations once again. And then we see the Armageddon. And he finally he gets cast into the lake of fire with all his followers. And then chapter 21. All things are new. Look at verse 1. It says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. Also, there was no more seas. Look at verse 3. It says, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And verse 4, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. There will be no band-aids in heaven. And this is a verse that you should hold on to, especially if you're going through a hard time. It's a promise of God. And verse 6 says, And he said to me, It is done. In other words, it is finished. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of, of, of the fountain of waters of life freely to him who thirsts. And then he talks about the city and then about how the city is going to have the streets of gold. 
and how the walls will be made of jasper and other fine rocks. And then in verse 23, he says, The city had no need of sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. And then chapter 22, which is the last chapter, but it actually is the beginning. Look at this promise. Revelation 22, 3. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And verse 7. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of this prophecy of this book. How many of you, when you pick up a new book, read the last chapter before you start the book? Any of you do that? Well, majority of the people, actually, when they get a new book, they actually start from the beginning and with anticipation wait for the last chapter to see what happens. Well, we as the church are in a similar situation. Well, first of all, before I get there, how many of you that is part of my generation remembers the movie called The Never-Ending Story? It's about a boy who's reading this book, and at the same time, he doesn't realize that he's actually part of the book. And only till the end does he realize he's actually part of the story that he's reading. And like I said, as the church, we're in the same way. We're reading Revelation, but at the same time, we're in Revelation. Where exactly? Everyone's guess, but we're reading the story that we're in. God gave us an opportunity to have a book to let us know what happens in the end. And we win because of Jesus Christ. We must not live as those without hope. Jesus Christ gave himself for our sins so that we could become alive. We must not walk around with our faces down but by living by faith in the excitement of things to come. God's promises are revealed to us through his word to encourage us. To encourage us. Let's not grow weary, but remember what got Adam and Eve through living in the consequence of their sin. The promises of God. What got Noah through the ridicule of people and through the rough waters. The promises of God. What got Abraham to leave his home when he knew to a new land that he didn't know? The promises of God. What got Joseph through those lonely nights? The promises of God. What got David through his toughest battles? The promises of God. What got Daniel through the trickery of men? The promises of God. What gave the disciples strength to die a martyr's death? The promises of God. What will keep the church from the gates of hell? God, because he promised. Christ is returning to rule and break the curse of sin and death. And with these last few words that you will find in the last verse of Revelation, a promise from God himself, he says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. And even so, come, Lord Jesus. Let's pray.